uh, if we're talking about policy, you haven't really addressed specific policy with respect to the middle class. You've spoken in generalities. You and I are both competing for a job, the job of being the Prime Minister of Canada. What is it in your resume that qualifies you to be the future Prime Minister of Canada? I fought extremely hard uh, to earn a nomination in Papineau. Well, some fighting words from leadership candidate Mark Garneau. With just two months to go until voting day, he's come out swinging against the front-runner, Justin Trudeau, who many have already crowned the winner. Mark Garneau joined me in our Ottawa studios just before taking the stage at yesterday's debate. Here's that interview. Mark Garneau, thanks very much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Great to be here. Uh, some very tough words from you last week. Uh, about the campaign, a new muscular approach to the campaign. Are you just frustrated that Justin Trudeau appears to be waltzing off to victory? I'm not frustrated. Uh, what I care deeply about is that we as Liberals do this right. Listen, this is the most critical time in the history of the Liberal Party. We're going to choose a new leader who will then take us into the next election. We absolutely need to make sure that we choose the right leader. You know, tactically, though, some people might say you're playing into the hands of the Conservatives. If you're going after Justin Trudeau, and should he win, the Conservatives now have a bank of video of you saying that Justin Trudeau, in a sense, is an empty suit. Are you not worried that the Conservatives are going to turn that around against the Liberals, should Justin win? No, I haven't said that. What I've said is that we must insist that every candidate spell out, not in excruciating detail, but in a general way, what their vision is. And Justin may do that in the next two months. Yeah, but I don't think I've uh, helped the Conservatives at all. But implicit in what you're saying is that up until this point, Justin hasn't said anything. Well, what I've said is that, you know, if we're going to choose the next leader, we need to hear from each of them. That is something that needs to happen. There's two months left in this campaign. Justin may very well do that. I can give you an example. On uh, Monday, I announced my policy with respect to student debt, deferring it until the student gets a job. That's a very smart policy. Justin picked up on it three days later and has announced it uh, as well. So he's beginning to put a little bit of meat on the bones. We need to see a lot more because he's talked about his uh, concern about the middle class, but he hasn't said what he's going to do for the middle class. He's got two months to do it, and if he does it, so much the better. People will have a better idea. I want to move on to another subject that came up last week, and it's been around now for a couple of weeks. That, of course, is the Canadian Senate mm -hmm. and what's going on. number of senators under investigation. It seems to me that there are three ways that we can deal with this. We can either reform the Senate, we can abolish the Senate, or we can hold a referendum and ask Canadians what they want mm -hmm. to do about it. Mm -hmm. Which do you favor? I re I, I'm in favor of reforming the Senate. I am convinced, notwithstanding the, the bad behavior of certain senators, that uh, the Senate is a valuable institution. I've worked with senators uh, over the past four years, and many of them work very, very hard and make a useful contribution to the Parliament of Canada. But I am in favor of an elected Senate. There are some challenges. We have to get the provinces to sign on, particularly Alberta and British Columbia, which will be at the moment underrepresented unless we increase the number of senators. And the most important part is that there has to be a tie-breaking mechanism in place. And we've said this since the beginning in the Liberal Party, because you can't have two houses fighting it out all the time. But you're talking about reopening the Constitution to do that. In order to do that, yes, you will have to reopen the Constitution. Are but, you, you know, uh, in Australia, they've done this, and it works well. You know, let's not be overly sort of nervous about opening the Constitution. If we want to bring real change, I don't agree with Justin Trudeau, who says that, well, it's simply a question of appointing the right people more carefully. People have said that many, many times over the decades, and every once in a while we find out that, uh, well, despite perhaps that intention, I mean, I can't understand how uh, Prime Minister Harper chose uh, Mr. Bresso. I really, really can't, because, I mean, there was already quite a bit about him before he became a senator. I want to uh, put to you some rapid-fire questions that I've put to other candidates mm -hmm. running for the leadership, and uh, we'll just go through as many of these as we can. First mm -hmm. of all, should British Columbia be compensated for having a pipeline run through its territory? Uh, no, that's not the way I look at it, but British Columbia has to be on side with respect to the Northern Gateway Pipeline. The government has, ran, has tried to ram this through. They've talked about, you know, uh, radical environmentalists, Joe Oliver has talked about it. They've said that they could reverse the, the decision of the National Energy Panel if they'd said, no, you can't go the Northern Pipeway. That's no way to negotiate and work with provinces. That is something that uh, this government just doesn't seem to know how to do, to work constructively on something that is a win-win if you do it properly. Very quickly, 
Carbon tax, cap and trade, or not? A price on carbon. I have not decided yet, but I will decide what's the best way to do it. Finally, Mark Garneau is Prime Minister of this country. On your first day, which legislation would you overturn? The old age security, age moving to 67, I will bring it back to 65. On, your, on one of your first acts? Yes, and then I will bring back the long form questionnaire for the census because it's the most valuable database for social policy in this country. Mark Garneau, thanks very much for being here. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much, Tom.